All right, in this video, we're going to talk about finding uh, trig equations given graphs, so specifically for sine and cosine. Um, so what we might have is something that looks like y equals uh, a times the sine of b times the quantity x minus c. So that's a little different from how I've previously done this in my classes. It might be different from how you've seen it. Um, so it's b the quantity x minus c, and then plus d at the end. Um, and then what you can do is you can just swap out sine for cosine. So uh, replace sine with cosine, it's exactly the same. Um, so we have, uh, the first thing is called the sinusoidal axis, and that's just y equals d when we're looking at this. Um, you can uh, just look at the graph to find that, or what you could do is you could do the maximum plus the minimum divided by 2. So it's the average of the maximum and the minimum. Um, it's kind of like the middle of the graph. And the next thing we get from here is we have the amplitude, and the amplitude is actually just the absolute value of a. Um, and the way you can find the amplitude, there's a couple options. You can do the maximum minus the sinusoidal axis. You could do the sinusoidal axis minus the minimum, or you could find half the distance between the uh, maximum and minimum, because uh, that's really what amplitude is. It's how far you can get from the sinusoidal axis. Uh, so that's the second thing. Uh, the third part is uh, the period, really. So the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. We need to figure out b because we're going to have the graph. Um, so what we'll do is we'll find the period, and we'll use 2 pi over b um, to solve for b. And what we do usually is uh, I usually go from maximum to maximum, or from minimum to minimum, or sometimes I just count the pattern. Um, so hopefully you remember the pattern, we can go over that in a second, because um, that's just easier. I, I rarely go intercept to intercept from the pattern, because you have to count two, uh, like there's an extra one in between, it's, it's annoying. Um, so we have that. And then the last thing is a starting point, and that's just x equals c. And you're going to actually pick that, or maybe you'll be told what to start with. Hopefully you just start with zero and go from there. Uh, so let's kind of review the uh, patterns here. So if a is, it really comes down to the sine of a. If a is greater than zero, if a is less than zero. So we have one pattern for sine, one for cosine. So for sine, if a is positive, it goes intercept maximum, intercept minimum, intercept. And then if a is less than zero, the maximums and minimums switch. So it'll look like that. And then for cosine, it starts at a maximum if a is greater than zero. And then if a is less than zero, it starts at a minimum. So the maximums and minimums switch again. All right, so that's what we need. Um, let's do a problem. So here is a graph, and we need to uh, figure some stuff out. So the first thing is I need the sinusoidal axis. Well, in this case, I can just look and see. Could have averaged the uh, max and the min, but I don't need to in this case. So I get that. So my sinusoidal axis is y equals 2. Remember, that's d for our equation. Uh, the next thing is I need the amplitude. So I look from the sinusoidal axis to the maximum is 3. So the amplitude is 3. Um, the next thing I need is the period. So I go from minimum to minimum in this case. And I get that the period is 8, right? 10 minus 2. Um, and now I'm going to solve for b. So 2 pi over b is equal to 8, which means that b is pi over 4. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is choose a starting point. So I'm going to start uh, right there on the y-axis. Uh, it's an intercept. And if you look at it, it goes intercept minimum, intercept maximum, intercept. That's a negative sine graph. So what I'll do now is y equals, remember, negative sine because it goes intercept minimum. So negative, and then fill in all the parts. And that's our equation. So if I want another equation, what I'll do is I'm going to move to this minimum, the first minimum to the right of the starting point there. Um, so that's C2, that's when X is equal to 2, so C is equal to 2 in this case. Um, it goes minimum, intercept, maximum, so that's going to be a negative cosine graph. And all that really happens is I've changed the starting point, I changed sine to cosine, um, and I kept the sine in this case because uh, it was a negative. If I move over another increment, remember the inter increment divides the period into four uh, equal parts, which is where the uh, each part of the pattern falls. I get here, uh, it's intercept maximum, intercept, so that's going to be positive sine, so we can fill that in, and then if I move again, I'll be at a maximum, which means it's a positive cosine. All right, so that's the basics of how it's done. I'm going to do one more example where the period's a little weirder, um, so that we can kind of see, but first thing I'll do is find the sinusoidal axis. In this case, uh, I'm going to actually think about the maximum and the minimum, find the average of those and the average turns out to be negative 1. So that's my sinusoidal axis. Um, I need the amplitude, so I'll find that distance, and that's 4. So the amplitude is 4, or A is 4, which is what we really need. 
um, I need the period. So uh, if I go from this first intercept uh, and then follow the pattern, I get to the end of a period, but it's not a good place or it's not like a lattice point. So I don't really know what that value is. So what I'll do is that's one period. I'm going to do it again. So I follow the pattern again. I'm still not at a good place. Do it again and I end up at 10. Okay, so what happened there is I got three periods, take 10, which means that one period would take 10 over 3. So I'm going to use that to solve for b. So 10 over, uh, 2 pi over b is 10 thirds, and then b is 3 pi over 5. Okay, so sometimes you can't count one period, but you could count multiple periods and then divide. That's what I've done here. Uh, I'm also in this case going to need, because the period is kind of strange, 10 thirds, right? I'm going to need the increment. So uh, there are four increments per period. So to figure out the increment, I take the period that I have and divide by four. So 10 thirds divided by four, which is five, six. So I'm going to use that, um, and you'll see in a second. Uh, so let's pick a starting point. So right there, C1. Uh, so C is going to be equal to zero. It's intercept maximum. So that's going to be a positive sine graph. So we have this. Okay, so we fill in what we know, and we're kind of done unless we need to do more. So I'm going to do more by moving over to this maximum, um, but that's not like a nice x value. So how far did I move to get to that point? I had to move the increment. So I started at 0, and I moved over 5, 6. So the x coordinate there is just 5, 6. So that's how the increment gets used. And this will be a positive cosine graph because we start to maximum. You really need to know where you start. Uh, for cosine, you just need to know where you start maximum or minimum. Uh, for sine, you need to know if you go from an intercept to a maximum or from an intercept to a minimum. Uh, let's do it again. So I'm going to move over to this next intercept. Um, I move over one increment to get there. So if I was at 5, 6, now I'm at 10, 6, then you can reduce that if you want, but I don't really care, so I'm not going to. Uh, and it goes intercept minimum, so that's negative sine. So we get this. And uh, then I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to move over one more increment which again is 5, 6. So if I was at 10, 6, now I'm at 15, 6, which you can reduce, but I'm not going to. And I'm at a negative cosine. All right. So that's basically how you do it. Now, one last thing you can do to check is, I'm not going to write the equation again, because if I wrote another equation, I would just start duplicating, right? I'd get a positive sine graph again. But if I did move over one more increment, I'd go from 15, 6, to 26, which is 10 thirds, and 10 thirds is the period, so it worked, right? We went all the way through the pattern, uh, and when we get through the pattern, we've gone one full period. All right, so that's how you can uh, write equations of sine and cosine graphs, uh, rather, equations for sines and cosine graphs. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.